the last example that actually is the case study of something that I personally work, worked on is the woven city in Japan. So let me give you a little bit of context and backstory of how it came to be. Several years ago, Akio Toyota, the current head of Toyota, was thinking quite a lot about how can they pursue their dream of mobility for all. As you know, governmental laws at the moment prohibit um, us from having self-driving cars everywhere in the city. It's still in the testing phase. And if you want to test it, it's only in closed facilities, which is pretty hard to predict how would masses and crowds of people behave in that environment. So one of the first goals for Toyota was uh, to understand how can they actually simulate a whole city to see how people behave on holidays, during Christmas, during summer break, when you have your kids visiting, um, you know, when you have big mass events, etc. And it's very hard to do when you're not allowed to test in a big city. So Akia Toyota thought, why don't we try and build our own city for testing purposes? Um, right by Mount Fuji, they had this big former plant plot, which they decided to um, dismantle and start building a smaller scale, couple of blocks, um, city to try and test out the self-driving technology. And as they started thinking about it, they decided to take it even further. If you're trying to improve mobility for everybody, why not improve the life for everybody? Why just stop at the mobility? Why can't we go further with sustainable fuel and new agricultural practices and smart homes and everything else that Toyota can also impact? So with that, they established the idea of Woven City as a test course for mobility to realize uh, their dream, Toyota's dream, of creating well-being for everyone. So I must say, I do not personally represent Toyota. I did work on this project as a contractor. Uh, but I think the way we approached it was incredible. And working with a Japanese company really blew my mind because of their uh, amazing ethics, amazing um, attitude towards the user needs, respect for user privacy, respect for user data, and just like the previous speaker, uh, speaker was talking, to remove the dark practices from the UX. So um, Akio Toyota decided to, decided to name the Woven City a living laboratory with all these different factors coming into play. So we have personal mobility, uh, mobility as a service, which is different because you can have your own car or your own bike, or you can rent it and hire it or use the public transport. Autonomous driving, robotics, smart home, AI and connectivity, multi-generational assisted living, optimizing nature, promoting health, sustainability, carbon capture, hydrogen-powered infrastructure, academic research and incubation, industry collaboration, and many, many more. This is a pretty ambitious project. And of course, this digitally driven future was specifically prioritizing not just your average human, but elderly, the children, the physically impaired, and other oftentimes mar marginalized um, parts of society. So here's a quick clip that showcases some of the ideas behind of the Woven City. As you can see in your typical city, uh, you have the bikes and the cars and the pedestrians all together. One of the first ideas that Woven City has put together is let's separate them. Let's have cars in one lane, personal mobility devices on the second lane, and pedestrians in the third lane, while also injecting it all with snippets of nature. Uh, the interesting um, story behind the name of the Woven City is actually that Toyota originally was a company that produced tools for weaving. So they um, brought a little piece of history into that idea. So you can see in this render, that, which is done by the architectural company Big by Bjarke Igels, um, you can see humans running and then the personal mobility device called ePallet automatically stopping when they detect a runner. You can see that there are robotic assisted living for elderly and kids. There are robots assisting you in the kitchen. There's robotic arms uh, within your apartments and different ways to inject the technology throughout the city. There are also drones and self-flying bigger drones. <laughs> I don't know if we still have a, uh, a name for them, a pilotless helicopter, if you will. And generally, every um, technological aspect that there is is multi-purpose. So the e-pallets that were used as buses during the day, during the night could be used as stands for farmer's markets or pop-up shops for places where you can buy food or drinks. 